FOB, Wikipedia Audio FOB became a pejorative term for a foolish man excessively concerned with his appearance and clothes in 17th century England. Some of the very many similar alternative terms are coxcomb, fribble, pop in j, fashion monger, and ninny. Macaroni was another term, of the 18th century, more specifically concerned with fashion. A modern day fop may also be a reference to a foolish person who is excessively concerned about his clothing, luxuries, minor details, refined language, and leisurely hobbies. He is generally incapable of engaging in conversations, activities, or thoughts without the idealism of aesthetics or pleasures. The word fop is first recorded in 1440, and for several centuries just meant a fool of any kind, the Oxford English Dictionary notes first use with the meaning of one who is foolishly attentive to and vain of his appearance, dress, or manners, a dandy, an exquisite in 1672. An early example of the usage is in the restoration drama The Soldier's Fortune, in which a woman dismisses a potential suitor by saying go, you are a fop. Origins The fop was a stock character in English literature and especially comic drama, as well as satirical prints. He is a man of fashion who overdresses, aspires to wit, and generally puts on airs, which may include aspiring to a higher social station than others think he has. He may be somewhat effeminate, although this rarely affects his pursuit of an heiress. He may also overdo being fashionably French by wearing French clothes and using French vocabulary. An example of the so-called French effet fop is Sir Novelty Fashion in Kali Sibir S. Love's Last Shift. Fop characters appear in many restoration comedies, including Sir Fopling Flutter in George Etheridge's The Man of Mode, or Sir Fopling Flutter, Afra Ben's Diatribe Against Politic Marriages, The Town Fop, and Lord Foppington in The Relapse by John Vanbrugh. Vanbrugh planned the relapse around particular actors at the Drury Lane Theatre, including Collie Sibber who played Lord Foppington. A fop is also referred to as a beau, as in the restoration comedies The Beau's Stratagem by George Farquhar, The Beau Defeated by Mary Pix, or the real-life Beau Nash, Master of Ceremonies at Bath, or Regency celebrity Beau Brummel. The sexual recklessness of Beau may imply homosexuality. Shakespeare's King Lear contains the word, in the general sense of a fool, and before him Thomas Nash, in Summer's Last Will and Testament, the idiot, our playmaker. He, like a fop and an ass must be making himself a public laughing stock. Osric, in Hamlet has a great deal of the fop's affected manner, and much of the plot of Twelfth Night revolves around tricking the Puritan Malvolio into dressing as a fop. FOP was widely used as a derogatory epithet for a broad range of people by the early years of the 18th century, many of these might not have been considered showy lightweights at the time, and it is possible that its meaning had been blunted by this time. In the 1900s, fictional heroes began to pose as FOPs to conceal their true activities. Sir Percy Blakeney of the Scarlet Pimpernel is a well-known example of this tendency, Sir Percy cultivates the image of being an overdressed and ineffectual social butterfly, the last person anyone would imagine being capable of dashing heroism. A similar image is cultivated by Zorro's public identity, Don Diego de la Vega. This continued with the pulp fiction and radio heroes of the 1920s and 1930s and expanded with the coming of comic books. The fashion and socializing aspects of being a fop are present in some interpretations of Batman's second identity Bruce Wayne and in the protagonist of the novel American Psycho, P. 
Patrick Bateman In Thomas Mann's 1912 novella Death in Venice a fop is derided by the main character, Gustav von Aschenbach, ironically so, as Aschenbach ultimately dresses in this manner himself. Some of the bright young things of the 1920s were decidedly foppish in manner and appearance, while, towards the late 1960s, male fashion became notably foppish in style, evocative loosely of the Georgian and Victorian eras. Pop stars often dressed in what might be termed foppish clothing, with the Kinks song dedicated follower of fashion capturing well the spirit of the time. While many characters from popular culture had a tendency to foppish appearance, e.g., Adam Adamant Lives, the third incarnation of Doctor Who and Jason King, they tended not to exhibit mannerisms associated with fops. The British fops, or Lucienne Callow and Fagan, appeared in several episodes during the Saturday Night Live 1995-1996 seasons. The characters first appeared on Weekend Update as the presidents of the Norm MacDonald fan club, but later appeared in several other sketches, namely monologues. The fops would appear in late restoration period clothing, and used a silly take on the period's language, mannerisms, and culture, not sparing the subsequent perversion also known for the time. In popular series Black Adder III, Hugh Laurie portrayed George, Prince Regent as a distinctly childish fop in contrast to his shrewd and sarcastic butler E. Black Adder. Johnny Depp renewed aspects of the fop in his portrayal of Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Although his costume might be termed grunge fop, he had the mannerisms down so well that the initial rushes of the first film upset executives at the Walt Disney Company. His interpretation prevailed, creating a new generation of fans of the fop. Hugh Grant, the British actor, is somewhat foppish in his style. In Channel 4's Vic Reeves' Big Night Out, character Graham Lister regularly refers to Reeves as the fop. In the British reality television show The Only Way is Essex, the character of Joey Essex can be seen as a fop and dandy. In Quentin Tarantino's 2012 slavery epic Django Unchained, Jamie Foxx's title character, when allowed to choose his own clothing for the first time in his life, chose a decidedly foppish outfit which immediately earned him the nickname Fancy Pants. In Mel Brooks' History of the World, Part I, in the French Revolution sequence, one of the king's court is referred to as Pop and J. In the 2007 video game Apollo Justice, Ace Attorney, Detective E. Mesky constantly refers to the prosecutor Clavier Gavin as a glimmerous fop due to the bling that he would typically wear and his obsession with his appearance. The term fop is also used occasionally to refer to other characters particularly being picked up by Apollo Justice due to the detective's habit of saying it. In Literature and Culture In 2017, FOP was used to describe a character in the book Firebud by Ellie Blake. The character referred to was Prince Kai who has an obsession with fine and bold clothing. A more recent and minor trend is FOP Rock in which the performers don 18th century wigs, lace cravats, and similar costumes to perform, a minor movement that would appear to owe something to glam rock, visual K, and the new romantic movement. The look was pioneered in the 1960s by Paul Revere and the Raiders. Adam Ant of Adam and the Ants picked up the trend, occasionally performing in elaborate highwayman outfits. Other notable examples would be Falco's performance as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in the song Rock Me Amadeus, a number one hit in the US and the UK, and number two in Canada in 1986, Japanese pop group Malice Miser, 
and Boston-based band The Upper Crust. Mid-2000s glam rock revivalists White Hot Odyssey also affected 18th century style wigs and clothing for their live performances. Prince was known for his foppish clothing in the mid-1980s, with ruffled shirts, tight pants, and high-heeled boots. Modern Examples Fop Rock <laughs>